Dr. Kate Cleasy. I'm an infectious diseases specialist working at the Clinical Excellence Commission, New South Wales Health. This is a short presentation about best practice for blood culture collection in response to the current shortage of blood culture bottles. But even if your site uses a different supply, the principles here are good to review to ensure blood culture collection is optimised. Your facility will have more information about the shortage. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands where we meet or work today. I pay my respects to their elders past and present. It is upon their lands that we meet and work. This is a very brief summary about some of the key work of the Clinical Excellence Commission. There is a lot of information about patient safety and quality care on the CEC website. This presentation is for anyone who takes blood cultures and is focused on best practice, which is fill volume, sequencing and aseptic technique. Importantly, it does not cover which patients should have blood cultures. Clearly, this is very important. There is clinical guidance available and you will be able to get assistance from your registrars or consultants. The presentation will take about eight and a half minutes to complete. Let's talk about fill volume. The volume of blood in the blood culture bottle is strongly related to the likelihood of getting a pathogen on culture. If you underfill the bottles, this reduces the chance of a pathogen being detected. So therefore, it's critical to get the right amount of blood in the bottle. There are published studies that show that between 40 to 80% of blood culture bottles are underfilled. In adults, each bottle requires 10 mils of blood, so 10 mils in each aerobic and anaerobic bottle, so 20 mils for one set of cultures. On the next slide, there is information about fill volume for children and neonates. As you can see in the picture, drawing a line or a mark on the bottle to show the fill volume will help to get the fill volume correct. On this slide, you can see that fill volume varies depending on age and weight of the child or baby, the reference at the bottom of the page gives more information. Apart from marking the bottle, holding the bottle upright makes it easier to see whether the right amount of blood has been added to the bottle. Make sure you fill the aerobic bottle first. There is air in the dead space which gets into the aerobic bottle. If this gets into the anaerobic bottle, the bottle is no longer anaerobic and this can affect the way it functions. Let's move on to aseptic technique. Contamination of the collecting equipment or bottles will affect the performance of blood culture testing unlike for other tests. The next few slides will provide more information and detail. Blood culture contamination, for example, those blood cultures that come back growing Staphylococcus epidermidis are a problem for two main reasons. Firstly, contaminated blood cultures have been shown to be associated with inappropriate antibiotic use, unnecessary investigations, including medical imaging, and often the need for more blood cultures. Secondly, contaminated blood cultures use unnecessary laboratory resources. Any blood culture that is positive needs further investigation to identify the organism and then testing for antibiotic susceptibility. This takes both time and consumables, which could be avoided if the blood culture was not contaminated. Aseptic technique is really all about reducing contamination during all aspects of a procedure. I like to think of it in three main broad areas. Firstly, you, that's your hands and how you take blood cultures. Secondly, the venipuncture site, so the patient's skin and often the arm. And then finally, all the equipment that you're about to use. We'll talk about you first. When taking blood cultures, you need to have clean hands and be bare below the elbows, which means taking off your watch, any hand or wrist jewelry and pushing up your sleeves. Cleaning your hands can be performed with soap and water or alcohol-based hand rub, which in fact is more effective and takes less time. You will need to clean your hands several times during blood culture collection, which it is why it is good to have alcohol-based hand rub on your trolley. If you clean your hands, as on this slide, and as suggested in the subsequent slides, this will increase your contribution to a better collected set of cultures. 
Secondly, we need to reduce contamination of the patient's skin or venipuncture site. After finding the vein you want to use, clean the skin for at least one minute using an appropriate skin antiseptic. In adults, this is either 70% alcohol or alcoholic chlorhexidine. For small children and neonates, you will need to use aqueous chlorhexidine. Ensure this is allowed to dry completely. If the antiseptic isn't dry, it isn't effective. If you have to repalpate for a vein after you have cleaned the skin, you will need to do this step again. We have talked about your hands being clean and proper cleaning of the patient's skin or venipuncture site. Now, thirdly, a few words about equipment. There are a number of actions you can take to keep all the equipment as clean as possible. Once you have checked the blood cultures are for the right patient and they or their carers know what you're about to do, gather all your equipment with clean hands and place on a cleaned and disinfected trolley. Please do not place anything on the patient's bed or on the patient's bedside table as these are not as clean as a clean trolley. After you have checked the blood culture bottles to make sure they are good to use, including marking the fill volume amount, the rubber bungs need to be disinfected using an alcohol wipe as they are not sterile. Wipe the rubber bungs for around five seconds using a new swab for each bottle and allow them to dry. So now you have all your equipment ready and you have clean hands. Clean the skin as covered earlier and allow to dry. While you are waiting for the skin to dry, clean your hands and put on gloves and eye protection. If you haven't cleaned the rubber bungs yet, you could do this now. Without touching the anticipated venipuncture site, insert the needle into the vein and fill the blood culture bottles, starting with the aerobic bottle. Remember, we don't want air in the anaerobic bottle. If you need to take any other blood tests, such as a full blood count, do this after the blood cultures. If you haven't been able to get enough to fill each both bottles, prioritize the aerobic bottle. In children and neonates, remember, usually only aerobic bottles are used. If you are taking blood from a cannula, this must be one that has just been inserted and not been accessed. Take blood cultures as described, taking care not to touch any of the sterile parts of the cannula or syringe, and before taking blood for any other tests or connecting an intravenous line. When you have the filled bottles, gently invert them several times, label them and put them in a biohazard bag together with the request form. Put the sharps into a sharp spin, remove your personal protective equipment and dispose of any waste, and finally clean your hands. Ensure to document the time and date of the blood cultures in the patient's medical record. So in summary, for patients who need blood cultures, there are three really important points to remember. Fill the bottles to the right amount, 10 mils in each bottle for adults. It varies for children and neonates. This optimizes the chance of getting a pathogen. Fill the aerobic bottle first. This optimizes bottle performance. And thirdly, understand and practice aseptic technique to help to reduce blood culture contamination. Thank you for listening. Here are some links and additional resources. And if you have any additional questions, my email address is here and please feel free to use it.